Your glory. Goes. 
40 years. It's been a long time. It's been a really long time. You know, I have a scripture to share with you this morning. It's Lamentations 3, 22 and 23, and it says this. It is because of the Lord's loving kindness that we are not consumed, because his tender mercies, his tender compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great and beyond measure is your faithfulness. Today I'm going to be talking about faithfulness. And you know, from the very beginning of GT, we have seen God's faithfulness. Um, back in um, 1956, a small group of people decided that they felt like God was saying, start a church. And so we started real big, you guys, in a garage, in a garage. And um, they would um, go as they grew to different places. They'd rent different places in the city. And they finally went to Airport Road in the late 60s. And uh, it always gives me great joy when I tell this story. A lot of times I do the journey class and I'll talk about the history bill because I've been here so long, I am part of the history. And, um, and it, it's always incredible that first building that they built back in the 60s, they built so that you would be where you are today. Do you know what they told them? We're just gonna build it as we go. We can't afford to just get a whole bunch of money on a loan. We're going to build it as we go, and we're going to build it all out of concrete blocks, those concrete cement blocks. And they told them every week, go to the, to the lumber yard and get as many as you can and put them in your trunk and bring them. And that's what we'll build with next week. And I just think all along through GT's history, it's been sacrifice and faithfulness, hasn't it? Amen. We came from that. Um, in 1991, um, BG and I felt like I was saying, um, come to Decatur. And so um, our two girls, um, Amy and Missy, and um, BG and I moved to Decatur. And I remember when BG first started, we, we were the only pastors. He said, I want two things. I want a youth pastor and I want a, a, a music pastor. And within a few months, we found uh, Pastor Brian, and he started with us. And then the search was on for a music pastor. And, you know, back then it was videotapes, and BG had this big box, and he'd watch a videotape, and he'd throw it in the box. And he'd watch a videotape, and he'd throw it in the box. And then uh, a couple days, he came home, and he said, there are a lot of talented jerks. And we are not going to have a talented jerk. We are going to have a, someone that wants to come here that has the heart, the right heart. We're going to believe God for a great singer, but we are going to believe God for someone with the right heart. It was um, November of 1992 that um, he came um, and stayed at our house. He was single at that time, just out of college, and um, stayed at our house, and that was part of the interview. And we had quite a time for several days. And uh, it would be the night um, that we were having everybody to our house. And the deacons were coming over for a meal, and by then, Matt has been at my house for several days, and um, well, him and my girls just hit it off like a brother and sisters. I mean, like, they were just doing everything together. He was playing video games with them. He was doing all kinds of stuff, and I just remember, and this may be the reason he's always called me mama, um, I the deacons were almost, it was almost time for them to come. And everybody, they, they were messing around like kids, like kids. And I, and I called them into the kitchen and I said, this is not going to happen when the deacons are here. <laughs> it is not. <laughs> so maybe that's why from the very beginning, I was mama and BG was dad. And uh, somebody, I can't remember who, made reference to it on the video that... Uh, it was always interesting when he would take you around and you would call him dad and he would call him son and they would look at BG and Matt and be like, hmm, how'd that work? 
So in uh, January of 1993 was his start date. Don't worry, his apartment wasn't ready. So he lived with us <laughs> for uh, quite a few weeks, quite a few weeks. And so he definitely became part of the family then. And uh, it has been a ride since, hasn't it? It has been craziness for us. I thought I should tell you a few things that you might not know about him. Um, the first thing was he, he loses stuff a lot, like all the time. And I cannot remember how many times the same thing happened every Christmas Eve. Every Christmas Eve. So we, we would have a staff gathering at our house for the new meal. You're supposed to be there. And there was a gift exchange. They got names weeks before and we would be there, everybody, except Matt. So where do you think he is? He's at Walmart getting his gift. But that's, don't worry, every single time, for years, he would lose his wallet while he was getting the gift. So then we're waiting because now he's searching for his wallet. One time he actually put it in the cart return out in the parking lot and left it right there. How many times? I don't know. A lot of times, right? <laughs> a lot of times. Um, I remember that uh, we were watching a videotape of Matt and Diva who uh, went to ORU they were uh, singers for Richard Roberts and traveled extensively with, her, with him all over. And um, for some reason, we had it on, and you were at our house, and BG said to him, you need to marry that girl. Well, who would think that he would ever marry that girl? <laughs> they had been friends for years, but they had never dated. And I don't know why he started, but we are so glad he did. We were Girlfriend Central. This is when you came to visit. One of the guys, Pastor Brian, was single. Pastor Matt was single. Both of them had girlfriends from other states. So we were a girlfriend. That's where the girlfriends stayed. And Diva and, I, and the girls, my girls, oh my gosh, they love Diva. I'm not sure if you came for him or you just came to have fun with the girls because you love both. Uh, but aren't we glad that... Um, in 1984, they got married. Yeah. Because we know he married up. I mean, let's say that, right? Let's just come out and say it. He married up. And, um, and since then, uh, we had the privilege of being part of uh, being there when the babies were born. And uh, we were always uh, Nana and Poppy, even before my kids, or Amy had kids, I was Nana and Poppy to uh, Brielle and Nico, and so it has been quite a ride. You know, when BG would um, teach the class that we would do for membership, he would always um, quote uh, Charles Dickens, and he said, Decatur, it was the best of times and it was the worst of times. Um, and that has been the case for us together. You know, way back then, we started in that first sanctuary on Airport Road. If you've ever been in that building um, up front, it is not a large sanctuary, but it holds quite a few people, but the foyer is tiny. And we started to grow. And then we added services. And it was... So one service, the first service would get done, and then it was like the parting of the Red Sea, trying to get through the people to get one service out and to get one service in. It was uh, quite an, an obstacle. And don't worry, I don't know, do you remember that uh, for a while there we could, we had so many people and not enough bathrooms. So we, don't worry, we, our only solution we could come up with until we built more bathrooms was the men's was the women's and the women's was the women's. So, you know, women need more. Don't worry. The guys got to go out to the porta potty outside. <laughs> we were a classy bunch, right? <laughs> and the really cool thing from the very beginning, um, our staff was not uh, scared to try all kinds of things. They had the craziest ideas, and at the beginning, oh my gosh, did we do crazy ideas, didn't we? Um, because the, they always said, 
the message is sacred, but the method is not. And however we're going to do it, we're going to reach people. And um, that has been a theme for GT all these years. All these years. No matter what, we're going to reach people. Pastor Matt came with some quite a few ideas, and we started having Easter dramas, the greatest story ever told. Um, he did The Preacher's Wife. Um, it's a wonderful life, and if anyone was around back then, you might remember um, the angel that came flying down. Who would have been that angel? Oh, that would have been Pastor Matt that actually was flying down. You even took a few pies in the face to raise money for, um, I think, for the music department, maybe, maybe for missions. Um, I don't think you want to do that anymore, right? No, no you're not doing that anymore. Okay. Uh, and I must confess that there are some words that he would say that I would just be dreading. He would either call me up or he would come into my office and he'd say, Mama do you know how much I love you? And I thought, oh. And here's what I would say. What do you want? Because he was going to ask me something that I wouldn't want to do. And there were many times, weren't there, through the years that he would have me do something so out of my comfort zone, like so out of my comfort zone. The one that is the top out of my comfort zone. Mama, I think we're doing a 50s theme for Moments of Majesty, which was a night of music and drama. And what we want to do is we want you to be kind of like Olivia Newton-John and, and BGOB like John Travolta. And what we want you to do is not just come out and do a few little things. No, we're going to have you do a little dance. <laughs> Oh, I dance. And don't worry because, yes, my hair was slicked up with some kind of a fake ponytail on. And I can't see without my glasses. Like, I, I, you know, I couldn't see the front row. for my, So no glasses. And, oh, my gosh, was that a stretch? Oh, my gosh. People thought it was wonderful, but, oh, my gosh. I was just, it was one of those things that I thought, why? Why did I say I will help you? Oh my gosh. Well, through a series of miraculous things, um, we ended up here in 2008. And uh, it has been quite a ride the whole way through. You know, I want to tell you, in case you don't know, ministry isn't easy. It's not easy, you guys. He makes it look easy. It is not easy. It is not easy. There are lots of wonderful things about ministry. Lots of wonderful things about ministry. There's lots of hard things about ministry. You know, I was thinking, okay, what's some of the really hard things? We've had to go have funerals for people that we dearly loved. For years and years, we're by our side in ministry. We've had people leave. We've had people come. Um, your life is public when you're in ministry, very public. And uh, so we have gone through things publicly together. Um, miscarriage. Um, in 2004, my um, youngest daughter, Missy, um, who was actually his sister, um, got sick and um, got sick on a Wednesday, and on Sunday she had died. And uh, we walked through that together. Probably one of the hardest things we had done up until that time. You've lost your dad. Diva's lost her parents. Ministry is public, and sometimes that's not easy. But God has been faithful, faithful, faithful. Yes. Aren't you glad for God? Today I want to talk about faithfulness. And, um, 
you know, it says the, the true meaning of faithfulness is steadfast in affection or allegiant, loyal. Loyal. You know, when I read that, I thought um, way, way back, way back to the first building, um, we came and we actually had a consultant come and talk to us and they talked to us as a staff. You know, we were in this trying to figure out how we were gonna, we were growing really fast, how were we gonna take care of it all? And um, I don't know, they did some kind of a ministry test on us and um, the consultant said to BG, you're a very unusual leader. You, you give people lots of freedom because you like lots of freedom as long as they do a really good job. But what's your number one thing is loyalty. You want people to be loyal, faithful and loyal. Do you know what? God wants us to be that way yes. to him. Amen. He wants us to be faithful and loyal here, even as you're part of GT, that you're faithful. You know, Hebrews 11 is kind of the hall of faith. You know, it talks about all the incredible people throughout the years and their faithfulness. And um, one of them that... He actually has a very short part of it, but he kind of stuck out to me was um, Joseph. And if you know the story of Joseph, um, you'll know, I'm going to give you the Brenda Nevitt real quick version because we don't have time to read it all, but it's in Genesis 37. So if you have not read the story, read it because it is such a fascinating story. But if you remember the story, um, Joseph's brother's, do not like this dreamer, this guy that, that sees what God wants to do in his heart and his life. And they sell him into to, um, some traveling men that end up putting him as a slave. He ends up in Potiphar's house. And, um, but all the way through, as I was rereading the story, I could see that no matter what situation is, he was in, he was faithful. See, he was in the... Potiphar's house, a young man that had his life torn away from him, yet he was faithful with what God had given him. And it couldn't have been easy, yet he rose to a, an incredible position in that household only because of his faithfulness. Then comes the time where he says no to temptation when Potiphar's wife tries to get him to have an affair with her. And he says no. And you know what? Sometimes you do the right thing and it doesn't end up like you think it should. Because you feel like if I've done the right thing, then the right thing should happen. But what happened to Joseph is he was put in jail for something he never did. For something he completely had said I didn't do. Yet the wife who was offended that Joseph was, because I'm sure everybody did whatever she said. And he ends up in prison for a long time, for a long time. Yet the scripture says the jailer put him in charge of everything in the jail. Wait, 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 wait. How does that happen? You have favor of God because he was faithful to God even when it didn't seem like anything was working out. Do you know what? There are going to be times in your life where nothing's working out and you're going to have to choose whether you're going to be faithful to God or not. There are going to be times. There's going to be seasons. You know, when we lost my daughter... I, I don't know if I had ever heard the statistic, but the statistics is incredibly high that many parents divorce. They can't deal with the loss, so they just divorce. And we just said, we're not going to do that. We're just not going to do that. I mean, it is a tough season, and he was dealing with it differently than I was dealing with it. They were dealing with it differently when the wife was dealing with it. Amy was dealing with it differently than I was dealing with it. But we decided to deal with it together because we were going to be faithful. And what happens, just in case you don't know the rest of the story is, at one time, um, 
the, the ruler of the country ends up putting Joseph second in control of the whole country and through a series of miraculous things. But what I want to focus on today is he was faithful through it all. Through the good times and the bad times, he kept his focus on what God wanted him to do. And so I'm going to tell you real quickly a couple things we're going to learn from Joseph. Joseph was faithful to do what he was supposed to do, and he did it well. In difficult situations. Do you know God wants you to be faithful in your marriage when it's good times and bad times and I was married for a really long time, and there's going to be both. I, BG was my best friend. We were high school sweethearts. Most of the time, we, we were great. Every once in a while, we hit a rough patch, and he drove me crazy. Just every once in a while. It's going to happen. Are you going to be faithful? Are you going to be faithful because... That's what that covenant was. The second thing Joseph um, taught us was that he was faithful to authority over him. He was faithful to Potiphar, even though his wife was trying to get him to do the wrong thing. Every area, the reason he rose to where he rose was because he was faithful as he went. Do you know what? It might not be easy on your job. It might not be easy in your family, but those that have authority over you, we're supposed to honor them and be faithful. And only when we are faithful is God going to bless and change the situation. Faithfulness is something that is incredibly important to us and to God. And finally, Joseph was faithful to God because he chose to believe God when nothing was going right. You know, I think he just wrote down the dream that God gave for him, that he would be over people, that he would be working over people. Why he was as a slave, while he was in the jail, while he was, he had that in front of him. And maybe you need to write it down with that thing that God has put in your heart. And you don't even see how it's possible. And I want to tell you, anything's possible with God. And if it seems like it's something you can't possibly do, then it probably is from God because he never seems to ask us to do stuff that's within our comfort zone. Decatur wasn't our first choice. I'm so sorry to tell you that. (laughs) <laughs> we were in Gray's Lake and we did not want to move. We thought we were going to be there. We had been there six years. We had started from basically nothing. They didn't even have a building and we thought we were there for the rest of our lives. And God said, come to Decatur. And just so you know, um, BG said no the first time they called and talked to him. And I said, honey, you just said no, Right. Remember, God gave me a dream. I'm supposed to start cleaning my closet because we were moving. And he said, oh, gosh, why didn't you talk to me about that? And sure enough, we prayed about it, and this was where God led us. I was talking to Pastor Matt um, this week, and he said, don't worry. He didn't want to come to Decatur either. <laughs> As a matter of fact, he was all set. Got off the plane and comes into town. He's in town for a while, and he, the whole time he's thinking, I'm going to have a really nice weekend, but then I'm going home. I'm not coming to Cater. But do you know God sometimes says, wait, almost always says that um, you're going to do something that does not look like it's the right thing to do. It does not look like, it didn't look like a step up. Well, you know, Tulsa or Decatur. I mean, really, think about it, right? Yet God was faithful. And when we put our trust in God in the midst of some difficult situations, he will honor that. He will honor it. You know, um, 
August 17th, 2013 was, uh, was a really difficult day. Uh, Pastor Matt was the one that called me to tell me, uh, well, first of all, he asked me where Beachy was, and I said uh, he had gone to a minister's meeting in Arthur, in Arcola, in Arcola. And, um, and he said, I said, why did you need, a, to need him? And he said, uh, no, um, someone called me and thought he was in a motorcycle accident. And I said, he took his motorcycle today because it was a beautiful day. We would have no idea when we got up that morning that our lives were going to change. For you of, of the, for those of you who are here, um, your lives were going to change. When we got to the hospital, um, they were waiting for us, and uh, and it wasn't very long when they came in and said that BG had not made it. And I want to tell you that Pastor Matt probably never slept because I don't know how he could because he had to figure out very quickly how he was going to lead this church through this situation and at the same time grieve the loss of his dad and one of his best friends. You know, I was, um, I was thinking about it this week and I thought... Um, it would have been easier for him to leave, you guys. It would have been a lot easier to leave. It probably even went through his mind that how about if I just how about if we just go start over somewhere? We don't have to deal with the memories. We don't have to deal with going down that hallway and into that office, and we don't have to. How about if we just? But aren't you glad that he was faithful to what God said to his heart, and he was faithful to GT. Aren't we glad about that? Aren't we glad? You know, as, uh, as we uh, get toward the end of the service, um, I'm going to invite the, the priest, uh, praise band to go ahead and come on out. And um, I have something that I came across this week when I was doing my devotions. And I want, I want to read it. It was so powerful and just kind of went along exactly with what, um, what I was thinking about. Here's what it said. Following God is like climbing a mountain. If God showed us how high the mountain really is that he wants us to climb, we might be afraid to take the first step. We might argue that we're not ready, that we're not prepared to go all the way to the top. So he covers the top of the summit with a cloud, and all we can see is a step before us. That first step looks manageable, so we take it, then we take another step, and then another, and another, until one day we find ourselves at the top of the mountain without realizing where we are headed when we began. And then we're glad we took the journey. And uh, GT, our time indicator for 30 years, the best of times, the worst of times. And when I read that story, I thought way back, 1990s, if God would have showed us everything that that mountain was going to mean, we probably would have all said, we're we're not doing that. We can't do that. We're not strong enough to do that. We're, there's just no way we can do it. Yet God. Yet God. And here's what I want you to know. You are in might be in the midst of stuff and not sure what that next step's going to mean or, or how you're going to get to where you feel like God wants you to be. Take that first step. Just one step. And God will tell you what the next step is. Hebrews 10, 23 says this, Let us seize and hold tightly the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is reliable and trustworthy and faithful. Isn't he faithful? Through it all. Through it all. 
It's been 67 years since GT started in that garage. And through it all, God's faithfulness has been amazing. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I just thank you so much for your incredible faithfulness. Thank you, God, that um, as we took a step, and sometimes those steps were easy, sometimes those steps were hard, yet all along you have been faithful. And God, I just pray for people in this audience today that are watching online or in the auditorium, God, and they need to be reminded that you're faithful. They're going through a season, a really tough season, but God, you are faithful. You are faithful, and we thank you for that. We thank you that we know you are loyal to us, you are trustworthy, and you are faithful. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. I just don't want to end the service. We've got a little bit more. Don't you won't want to leave early today? You might like to get out usually and try and get out of that parking lot today. Stay. You, you won't want to miss what we've got coming up. But every time we're together, we want to give people an opportunity to receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior. And so if you'll bow your heads and repeat this prayer after me. Father God, I come to you because I need you. I admit that I've sinned and I ask you to forgive me of every sin. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Be my King. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, I'd like to invite the The priest team is already out here. I was going to invite them, but they're already out. They've gotten a great song for you. Faithful through the ages. Oh. God of Abraham, you're the God of covenant and faithful promises. Time and time again, you have proven to do just what you say. Though the storms may come and the winds may blow, I'll remain steadfast. And let my heart learn when you speak a word, it will come to pass. Great is your faithfulness to me. Great is your faithfulness to me. From the rising sun to the setting, same I will praise your name. Great is your faithfulness. Though the earth may pass away, your word remains the same, yeah. Your history can prove there's nothing you can't do. You're faithful and true. Though the storms may come and the winds may blow, I'll remain steadfast. And let my heart learn when you speak a word, it will come.
Jesus. So, so thank you. Um, you know, honest and truly, I am overwhelmed. I remember the deacons asking me way back when, can you promise us five years? And I said, absolutely not. <laughs> and, uh, and I said, well, what about three? And I said, yeah, three I can do. And so um, the reason, you know, the reason that we stay, the reason we are here, you know, because you all are so amazing and so thank you diva thank you to my kids to the staff to the deacons and to just the best church family i hold on to uh, the words from pastor bg that he so believes and are still true today the best is yet to come yeah and so thank you i love you guys (laughs) 